about that, I got cut off. But how do you impact a network? And the way you can do that is by focusing on communication, which is about things like frequency, the distance between you, relevance. How do I promote it? How unique is my promotion? Because that makes it feel personalized. It makes me interested in it. Are my segment sizes, are they correct? And also, can I leverage sub-networks? And that's about influence and how relevant you are. Uh, some examples uh, of what drives these things are, do you have holes? What is a critical path? How long does it take me to get through one point to another? And is there more than one path that I can go through? Uh, and that's referred to as equivalency. The problem is if you have equivalent networks and your competition found a backdoor into you. Uh, examples of individuals are like gatekeepers. And so, you know, how do I induce people to be more active? And so now you're talking about incentives and uh, influencers. Or maybe I should target certain individuals, which is the gatekeepers or the liaisons. Uh, so it's about understanding what's the nature of who you're working with. And so social network design is a lot like technical design. You're concerned about the hop count, basically how many nodes do I have to go through, are my paths minimized, and how robust is my network? I mean, how quick is it to collapse? Like if one net influencer decides to say something negative about me, is that going to take the whole network down? And so these are some of the things that you need to think about. Uh, in terms of your social network output, it's about topology, how they're concentrated, uh, how dynamic are they are, how they form relationships, and how difficult is it for discovery of new things. And so in terms of psychological, what you're interested in is uh, in the contradictions that happen. Is, uh, how effective is it versus how secure do I feel? And so that's where you're dealing with holes and confusion. Safety and affiliation, which is privacy versus in, uh, intimacy. Propinquity means how attractive I am to it. Uh, in my mind, I rank things. Things are more important to me, things are less important to me. How does this come across? And in terms of cultural differences, how civil is it? And as you can see, this is all tied into the perception uh, of the network. So some applications uh, uh, that currently exist is that I can track what goes on. Uh, they're trying to find more effectiveness through it. And through that data, this has become the norm. The problem with data is you will get noise. You'll get irrelevant things. And so the question is, how do I cut that noise out so I can get to the meat of what it is I want to look at? And so if I want to manipulate a network, it's basically about strategy. And so, uh, but the thing I have to be aware of, and these are kind of the overriding things, is uh, there's a limit to uh, relationships and uh, there could be blindness to the system. And that's the influencer effect. I just follow the influencer. I don't really pay attention to what's going on. In terms of software, uh, there's software out there, and this is cluster analysis. Who can find my customers? What do they respond to? How long do they respond? Can I optimize my performance? And so the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. You can figure it out yourself. So at the end of the day, what do I want out of a network? I want active nodes. I want people who are going to do things. I need growth out of my network. There are nodes of interest. Um, of interest for me. Basically, what are the major communications? And so, in the end, I need an active uh, operation. And so, some techniques where I can get activity are things like likes, shares, referrals. Uh, but I want these things to come from quality, from my actions, not just randomly happen. And this is, again, this is a big power, that when you can connect networks together, all of a sudden your entire network grows. And that's that you're just connecting one structure to another. Uh, so, uh, Senor Chavez talks about the cult. And so this is your, for startups, this is your first group of customers. 
And so your two biggest challenges starting out is nobody knows about you. If they do know about you, they don't trust you. They don't trust you because you're so new. So what credibility do you have? And this is why influencers are so powerful for two major reasons. Number one, they give you credibility. If people trust the influencer, you know, it's like somebody vouching for somebody else. Uh -huh. But influencers have their own networks. They have their own structures. So guess what? If you can tap into their network, they become your network and you spread very quickly. And that's why with the cult, influencers are so important. Uh, some things these uh, network theory is used for is terrorist tracking, societal design. We look at spread of disease, uh, physical states, and predicting events. Uh, now, all data, the question is, um, what's its value and what's their limits? And that's that you can get noise and that's so you can get points that are relevant and also you can get duplicating patterns. You're not learning anything more because you're just seeing the same thing over and over again. And so the thing about causality, and this is what makes or breaks you, is that it tends to be more art than science. Uh -huh. And so wrapping this uh, lecture up, it's about nodes, the conduits that connect them, the patterns that get created, how do I prevent inertia? How do I keep people active? How do I minimize that distance? And so that's about understanding how you're going to influence the gatekeepers or the influencers. I'm concerned about velocity. How quickly do things happen? It's so it's about my number of links and the magnitude. And I need my users to be able to share nodes, to create nodes, because that's how I build active networks. And that's how I also create large networks.